Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Humble Origins 2-Pack. And I gotta say, they're actually both very cool figures. Not without some flaws, but we'll get into, you know, those details later on. Um, hmm. We're gonna talk about Senator Shockwave considering he doesn't want to be here. So we'll do him very quick. And I gotta say... I am not the biggest fan of this mold. I, I get it's the, um, uh, the, what was it? The C, I know it's the Siege Seeker mold. So we get another Seeker. Yay. Um, but like, I'm not sure if it fits Senator Shockwave. I, and I know this is based off of his look in the comic. Um, and a look that I actually kind of, I really like. I like the, uh, the blue, the red and the white and everything. I like all that, don't get me wrong, that looks really cool. I just feel like maybe not just a slight remold of the Tetrajet being his, uh, you know, to be his alt mode, but I kind of sort of get it. Like, I, I it's weird. I both do and do not understand why they chose this mold as Senator Shockwave. Because I won't lie, this does look really good. And the colors are a lot more, uh, they're actually a bit brighter, um, in person than they are coming off on, uh, on camera. But, yeah, and I, quite honestly, I love the fact that it's, he's very Ultra Magnus colored. You know, with the blues, the whites, and the reds. It looks very nice. Um, yeah. So, we shall take a look at the head. And something that I will give... All of um, all of the siege toys, they are greebly as heck. Cause like, just look at the inlet detail. Not only in just that very nice head sculpt, but also on the inside of the air intakes as well. You have a bunch of really nice, just random detailing going out throughout the shoulders and that very nice chest piece. I'm glad they did a totally different chest piece. It looks very nice, and I love how um, how kind of regal it looks. You still have what kind of looks like chest inlet. Kind of gives me a uh, a Gundam chest vibe. I'm not gonna lie. Just turn these into uh, into vents, and you have like a Gundam chest plate. Again, a lot of really nice kind of greeblies. They didn't. They just repurpose the legs, which I'm 100% a fan of. These are great legs. The feet, on the other hand, but I've always been weird about. Uh, just cone feet. Um, but yeah, no, I love all the greebly details that they did on this guy. They even did the same here on the back with the, with the really nice fin things. Those look very nice. You have basically the Seeker backpack, except a lot more compact because of the new, uh, the new aileron thruster thingies. And he doesn't come with, um... With null rays, no, he comes with spiky shoulders. Because he is a senator, he does not require weapons of mass destruction, no. He just gets spiky shoulders. Because huzzah. And you can just kind of play around with those. However you want. And I very much, like I said, I like this mold. It's really, like, it fits the toy. It does not feel like it fits the character. I'm going around in circles here. I apologize. It's hard to put into words why I'm not, like, I don't 100% jive with this. But I think it's mainly these big guys right here in the back. I got used to the wings. So I'm like, why did you put giant thrusters on the side? Again, it's a me thing. But I promise not to let that hamper judgments at all. Articulation wise though, he has a, the head is on a ball joint, so you do get a full 360. He can look kind of side to side a little bit. Can't really look up and can't really look down, so that's a bit of a bummer. Arms can go all the way out, which is wonderful, so you can get a suck it Magnus. You can also do a full 360, thankfully. You can move the wings around if you'd like as well. And you get that lovely double bend at the uh, at the elbow and swivel wrist, as well as bicep rotation. And also, 
you can also make it so that he can cross his arms, so he can look very, very pissed off at some of the deci ugh, decisions. My brain malfunctioned there. Some of the decisions that the Council of Cybertron is making. How rude. But you can also swivel the hist. The hist. The hit. Not the sentient trees from Skyrim. No, the hips. You can swivel the hips. You get a wonderful leg spread there. And it can kind of only go back that far because of uh, butt flap. But you get the knees of a god. So the man can really high knee those <laughs> anyone who gets in his way. And you also get very nice foot rotation. Thanks to the very nice footsie wootsies. But yes. So, to compare this very nice shockwave feller, we will put him up against, well, the proprietor of this very nice mold, Starscream. So you can just kind of see all that they've really changed, which amazingly isn't a lot. Just the head, chest, and the, um, and the backpack. That's really all they've changed on this. Oh, and the crush, obviously. Uh, that's really all that they've changed, but... It really helps to make the character look different. It's not even just a different coat of paint, but also just small tweaks there. Yeah, so there's that. And, I mean, it's Shockwave, so... Yeah, we gotta kind of put him up against the Emperada version. Is that how you pronounce it? Emperada? Emperada? Hmm. And I don't know, but yeah. Bef <laughs> Good guy, slightly misguided to, uh... Mm. Logic is the only true factor here. Yeah. Yeah. So that is it for Shockwave. And we will, uh... We'll transform him when we get to do that with our next feller. Orion Bax. He's a short guy, so we gotta... Turn it down. And this is based off of the Hound Mold, which I think was a great choice for uh, for this version of Orion. He looks very nice. He kind of... He's giving off a mix between... Um, oh, God. What was the comic book issue where he was a very more slender, svelte um, truck mode? And then he also had the... He made the joke about his uh, the lucky face mask. That is what this version is giving me, plus a mix of um, the new Orion packs that we have with the uh, uh, the Friends 2-pack. Uh, who is the, uh, the Cybertron remold. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of prefer this version over the, Cy um, the new one. I know a lot of, and I'm happy a lot of people are getting a figure that they really want. I'm 100% happy. It just doesn't look great to me. Because it's this, I can, t I grew up on the Cybertron games, and I know a lot of other fans are probably also the same. It just does not sit right with me that it's basically just an upscaled this with a Cybertron kind of alt mode heavy duty truck thing. Now I know that's what, uh, that's how it looks better, or looks better? Eh. English. Hard. Why? I know it looks a lot more like the comic book with the Cybertron version. It just doesn't suit with just kind of how I feel. Because this is a middle stage of Orion with um, going from Orion to Optimus, you know? that That's just how I look at it. You have, uh, as Sheep Wilder would say, Twink Orion, you have Beef Orion, and then you have Optimus Prime, you know? That's just how I look at it, um, but that is a tangent for another day. Uh, looking at this guy, he very much fits the young Optimus Prime kind of category. He's blocky in all the right places. He's got the big shoes. He has the very nice, like, kind-looking face, but also a very stern commander kind of look going for him, and I love that. I think that just... Like, this suits a man who not only really likes the books, but also really knows how to hit the gym. And the fact that they used the hound mold 
to do that, I think is a genius move. Now, I do not have a hound, so I can't compare this mold to the original. Um, I don't even have detritus, but that's because I never... I'm gonna say this, and it's gonna sound like blasphemy here. I didn't like the hound mold when, you know, it first came out during Siege. I don't know why, I just didn't like it. Somehow, when I got my hands on this guy, I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. And so that's why... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm weird. I'm a weird person. Woo! Scary. Shocker. But yes, no, the head. I love the head. The head is so nice, and it gives a mix of Orion and Optimus with the way that you have the small references to his little head, um, his little head muff, ear muff things, but also a much rounder kind of head. And the larger side, um... Side guards just kind of giving off a little bit more Orion. You also have the Hound Gun, which is very nice. I have it in the configuration that makes it look like the Ion Blaster, but you can also take off the drum and put it on the side here if it wants to stay. There we go. And he looks very good like that. I very much like this gun. And something I love with this figure in general is the fact that you can actually get him to hold the gun with both with both hands. So you just have like a relaxing, kind of steady-handed uh, Orion. Like he's just sitting there on guard duty, just kind of like, dum dee dum be a dum You know? And I think that looks really cool. It, it, give, it makes him kind of look like a soldier. And that looks, and just in my opinion, that looks really cool. Yeah, so we'll take away the gun. Give me your gun, thank you. And he also comes with the Energon Axe. And I very much like this axe design. It's very cool. I don't know why, it just, I love the axe design. It is so free, uh, freaking cool. You have a lot of really nice details here, like what looks like a spring. <laughs> He has a very springy axe, apparently, on Cybertron. They have a very nice handle and everything. I think... I... Now, do not quote me on this, but I feel like this is... Basically just a revamped Energon axe that they had with the Thrilling 30 version of Orion. Actually, that's the same version of Orion that came with the comic book that made the face joke. So yeah, that, that, that version of Orion. But I, yeah, no, I love this. I think this looks very cool. Shut up, stomach. I, yeah, I dig it. It looks very cool. Uh, now, for articulation, head is on a ball joint, so it can look 360, which is very nice. You can look up about that far and down about that far, so not a whole lot. You can also get a Suck It Magnus out of him, which is awesome. You get a full 360. You get a bicep rotation, and you get about 90 degree of bend at the elbow, and you get very nice swivel fists, which is wonderful. You get a very nice waist rotation. You get full 360 there, which is awesome. And wonderful, wonderful thighs. You can go out that far and back that far. Not very hindered by the backpack that does not like staying tabbed in, which is unfortunate. But you also get pretty decent knees at a 90. And wonderful footsie wootsie, so he can really do some good kicks. Stability, on the other hand, is not one of Orion's strong suits. Come on. Ah! Ah, look at that. He's kung fu fighting. But yeah, so that is that. So we will put him, actually, we'll put him in the middle. Stay. Zoom out a bit. There we go. Zoom in a bit. There we go. And here we have him with Twink Orion. And something I found f I find kind of funny. He shrinks. <laughs> he shrinks a bit. He goes uh, he goes from being tall and lanky to short and boxy. And I like that. I think that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so you have that. And now we will also put him 
up against Optimus of Friggin Prime, who is decked out because I like it. And something that I just noticed having all three of these guys together, there are slight color variations with each Prime and not just or each version of this character. This version, the red is a lot more. A lot of the colors are a lot more pastel, very pale. The red's paler, the blue is a lot paler. Then you have this version of Orion, kind of like during the war, or just before, like during the uh, the tail end of the Golden Age. Very bright red, uh, vibrant blues. And then you have this version of Optimus, where the, dark, where the blue is a lot darker and dark red, showing just... I, I guess if you're going for the for a psycho analyst perspective uh the war has taken its toll and optimus has gotten a lot darker and a lot more serious why so serious but yeah so there's that and let's get down to transformation shall we because i have yapped on for long enough so to start off with optimus you're orion sorry you're going to just untab the arms like so and bring up the entire chest piece. And then, oh, actually no. You want to bring up the entire back. Flip out the backpack section. Then you bring up the back plate here, or the uh, chest plate. And you bring that in. So it tabs nicely. Then you bring in the arms. You just kind of have them straight out like so. Make sure that everything is... And then you want to turn them so that the... Elbows are facing inward, like so. And you just kind of want to rest them together, like that and like that. Make sure that the fists are facing down. And here comes the fun part. This I actually I love this part of the transformation. You open up the entire section of the legs, and then you just kind of rotate them down, like so. And you do the same. Oh, oh no! I broke his feet. Eh, it happens. It's just on a clip joint, so we just uh, clip it back in. And there we go. None's the wiser. Close that up, like so. Then we connect the legs together. We then fold in the arms and the legs so that they all kind of can join, like that. For the finishing touches, you fold in the feet so that they... Rest nicely, like so. And then you connect this part here. You just fold up the arms. And here we have him in his Jeep mode. Move that off to the side. Whoop. And now we will take a look at our good friend Shockwave and his transformation. Because it's basic. Now it is basically just Starscream transformation, but it's still pretty good. So. Pull back the entire backpack section here, and you flip around the wings, or the, uh, the air intakes to create the nose. Close that together. Come on. And something I like, this version is so much, it's so much easier. Oh my god, it's so much nicer to actually pull apart these guys, because it feels like I'm not ripping the entire toy in half. Just trying to unpeg the nose section here, so I'm so glad that they fixed that with this guy. Take the entire back panel here, and you tab it in. Untab the chest, like so. Rotate the head around, and just bring out the chest plate there. Take the arms, and you rotate them in, and in. So they look like that. You do the same on the other side, other side. There we go, there we go. And there we go, there we go. You just kind of bring those in, then you rotate at the waist. Fold in the footsies, fold up the kneesies, and connect the kneesies to the waist, like so. Bring down the entire chest, or the uh, the entire back panel here. Connect the arms to the legs, as one do, as one do. Bring down the chest a bit more. Connect the pylons, or the jet pylons, to the arms. Bring down the tri-thruster here. Bring up the chest piece, and here you have him in his vehicle mode. 
And I gotta say, I very much like this. Like, I know I was harping on it before, but when you have it in hand, it is not only very swooshable, but it also just kind of works in a weird way. I, I don't know how to describe it. It just... It looks weird, in, like, on photos and things. It, that that looks weird to me when it's on photos. But having him in hand and just kind of playing with him, it's very strange how holding a figure in hand helps it. You know, it's, it's that weird tactile feel, I guess. Um, but yeah, I very much like this alt mode. I think it looks very nifty. You can also swing the wings around, so if you prefer a more backwards wing um, kind of style, you can do that. Or you can have them facing up, so it uh, looks like that. You can do a bunch of things with the uh, with the tiny wings too. You don't even have to keep them here. You can also put them on the side of the arms as well if you prefer. So that way it kind of has a bit more of a wing span to it, even though it's got incredibly tiny wings. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I do kind of wish the wings were a bit larger, you know, just to help kind of support the already massive engine intakes like this this guy must have gone to some after work um like aftermarket shops to get upgrades this friggin big on his wings or maybe hey it's just the perks of being a senator for the upper class of iacon but either way we will put him back here now i'm just saying he's senator from iacon i can't remember the comics so please don't hurt me it's been a while since i've read that particular story uh, here we have him next to the Tetrajet mold, and yeah, uh, while you do have the similarity, like the very similar uh, similarities to the uh, Tetrajet, they do enough to make this guy look different while still maintaining that base um, Tetrajet kind of feel. Yeah, I think I actually think these look very good. Like you have a more uh, stylized version of the Tetrajet, so these guys were probably like. Birth, born, birthed, whatever, on the same kind of body layout, and then because money and influence, hey, I can change up my style a bit more. So, changes up the style. And I think that's really cool. And you know, the fact that you don't have a cockpit in the back. <laughs> that that kind of helps this look a lot nicer too. Yeah, so there's that. And here we have him next to uh, the space sub. Totally not the pew pew. Definitely not the space pew pew. But yeah. You uh you can kind of see where they went from stylistic to uh very militaristic and bare bones. Because this is just kind of but yeah. But yeah. So there's that. And that's basically it for uh C or Senator Shockwave. Hit the camera, sorry. Uh, he is also Blast Effect compatible, so you can shove the uh, Blast Effects into the ports. So it looks like he's flying all across Cybertron at mock speed. And because he's a center, he probably gets away with it. Whoosh. But yeah, so there is Senator Shockwave, and here we bring in Little Orion Pax. And I love this Jeep mode. It is so nice. Like, I I love it. I love the, the references that they have to um, both, like, pre-war Orion and also the, uh, the War Within comic, too. Like, I think this suits a uh, middle, like, middle-of-the-road Orion when he's just kind of getting his footing with the... Uh, with the Elite Guard and everything. But yeah, I think that looks really cool. And, of course, because he's Hound, you can store a whole bunch of guns on him. So you want to take off the gun barrel, or the, uh, the barrel drum. Put the gun right here. Put the barrel, or the, the drum, right in the back here. So now he's all kitted out. And you can also store the axe. Oop, wait a second. My apple G's. No, you want to put the gun in the middle so that he has the gun turret. And then you want to put the axe right here. And now he is fully kitted out. 
And that looks really freaking cool. And I love the fact that they kind of, aside from the, uh, the giant axe, I like how they kind of blend into the vehicle a bit. Like, this makes sense for a, um, this feels like it would make sense for an elite guard to, uh, member to have just, a, a turret on top of their vehicle mode just to make sure that, you know, whoever they're defending is, you know, safe and totally not going to get blown out of the sky. But yeah, I'll bring the axe off, so we will put this over here, and bring in Orion, and yeah, again, I kind of prefer this to this mold, uh, transforming this guy's a pain in the ass, it's just very, it, it's mainly this section here that's the pain in the butt, and the shoulders are a bit too much of a pain, but yeah, I, again, I very much like this mold, and bringing in Orion, or Optimus, yeah, this just, it feels like it makes sense, itty bitty pickup, meant for very light, kind of, light dock work, heavier set vehicle, meant for the hard, the hard and rugged terrains of war, and something in the middle that mixes both the utility aspect and the leader aspect, all in one very nice package. And I like that kind of evolution of vehicle and robot modes. But yeah, so that is it for the Legacy 2-pack. The, um, who do you call it? Oh my god, the Humble Origins 2-pack. Uh, I, honestly, I highly recommend these guys. They are very fun to play with. And they look very good on a shelf, no matter where you kind of have them situated in a display. They work so well together or apart. It just, it works. So I highly recommend them. Maybe not the prices that Amazon is selling. Maybe try and find them on sale. That's quite honestly the only reason I was able to get that one and uh, tomorrow's review. Um, because... They were on sale and they were pretty cheap. Um, but yeah. So that is it for this. I hope you have enjoyed. Have a good rest of your day, night, or whenever you watch this video. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.